Our second scripture lesson this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. It can be found on page 1053 of your pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, helping them understand what it means to be a new creation, a new beginning in Jesus Christ. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Is there a better picture of reconciliation and right relation in the Bible than this very story from our Old Testament lesson this morning? Who could have imagined that the struggle that began between Jacob and Esau more than 20 years ago, when Jacob stole Esau's birthright and blessing, Who could have imagined that it would end like this? You will remember that Jacob impersonated his brother Esau and tricked their father Isaac. He tricked him into giving him the blessing that belonged to his older brother, the birthright that was his, Jacob took. Now what does this mean, this birthright that we see here? I think it would be Something like the equivalent today of the younger brother snatching away the family company and perhaps the lake house. Naturally, Esau was enraged by his brother's actions and he vowed to kill Jacob and to get even. And at his mother's urging, Jacob fled to live with his uncle Laban. And there Jacob began to build a life for himself. Even though Jacob was filled with fear and mistrust and calculation of risk, God blessed Jacob even in that state. You see, Jacob lived in a world where life was a struggle, where things were to be bargained for or acquired. And after 20 years of living and building a life with his uncle Laban and his people, God came to him and said, it is time. It is time for you to return to your homeland, to your father Isaac in the land of Canaan. And God even promises to go with him. So Jacob sends his messengers to Esau to tell him, that he is returning home and bringing gifts of livestock. You might say that Jacob is trying to buy his brother off. His hope is that this will give him favor. 
We pick up this scripture reading as Jacob's messengers come back to Esau, or come back to Jacob with the news that Esau is coming toward him with 400 men. Now I want you to experience with me the racing heart and the sweaty palms of Jacob after 20 years of fleeing and living in fear of his brother. And for Esau, as he is coming forward to meet his brother, the feelings that he must have had of resentment and sorrow. Jacob is terrified. The brother that he tricked out of his birthright is coming towards him. Imagine Jacob goes forward and bows seven times. He is shaking and afraid. But not Esau. He runs to meet his brother, embraces him, and falls upon his neck and kisses him, and they weep. Reconciliation, how sweet it can be. Jacob has brought with him Rachel and Leah and offered them to Esau, hoping to buy his brother's favor, as we might do, hoping to buy another's favor. But Esau refuses his brother's gifts and asks, what do you mean by all this company that I met? And Jacob answers, to find favor with the Lord. But Esau looks at his brother and says, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob pushes the gifts back to Esau and he says, If I find favor with you, then accept my present from my hand. For truly to see you is like seeing the face of God. Friends, in those beautiful God-given moments, when you have found it in yourself to reach out to someone you have wronged, or when someone who has wronged you reaches out, it's a beautiful thing to see the face of God in the loved one with whom we are reconciled. It is a new beginning. This is a new beginning for Jacob, for here he finds a different brother. He meets a different God, and he emerges with a new vision and a new world awaiting him. No longer must he run for his life. No longer are livestock and possessions to be hoarded rather than gifts to be shared. I believe that our new scripture, our New Testament scripture lesson this morning from 2 Corinthians is a mini gospel. You see in this passage, as Paul writes to the church in Corinth, that we are no longer separated from God by our sin. Just as Jacob and Esau are no longer separated from one another. Friends, that which separates us from God, from ourselves, from one another, and from all of God's creation is taken care of in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are a new creation. We have a new beginning already made possible for us, already completed in Christ's death and resurrection. And yet our task is not to become lazy, but to live into what God has called us as individuals and as a church, what God has called us to be and to do. For God is calling each one of us to be ambassadors of reconciliation. We are called to see others in our lives through the eyes of Christ. 
Not our eyes, but through Christ's eyes. Is there a better picture of an ambassador of reconciliation than Esau throwing his arms around his brother's neck and kissing him as they weep? What does that new creation that Paul refers to in this passage, what does that look like for us here at Second Church? I want to invite you to come with me into the atrium. I want to share with you what I have observed this past week. The atrium is a wonderful place in our church to sip coffee, to sit with friends, to share our faith, our joys, and our struggles. But it is also a place where our adult special friends group gather each morning with their caregivers, and they greet each other across the atrium. They call out to us, good morning, it's a beautiful day, and their enthusiasm can't help but get inside you. What you see in the atrium are preschoolers from Children's Circle parading around in their cowboy outfits, riding their broom horses, proudly waving to those who will cast a glance their way. You see two little girls lying on their bare tummies. As their tummies touch the floor, they're coloring their new coloring books as their mothers apply for assistance in order that their heat might be kept on in this cold weather. There's a bride that bustles through with her makeup full on and her hair for glory, going to meet her bridal party, filled up with the hope that comes on that special day of promise. Might what we see in our atrium be a forecast of a new creation, a forecast of the heavenly banquet right here in our midst. Friends, right before our very eyes, we are witnessing the reconciliation each day of God's human family. Isn't that what the church is all about? Suddenly, if we open our eyes, we find ourselves surrounded by people that we wouldn't ordinarily encounter here in the walls of the church. What a beautiful new creation. We see what Paul is talking about. And as Jesus Christ has reconciled us to God, we as a body of Christ are called to actively care, love, and support one another. Can you find in our atrium a new way of seeing, a new way of being individually in Christ? But also we are called to be a new creation together. For we have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. We have been reconciled to ourselves, to one another, to God's larger world, and to creation. Jacob only sees the face of God through the face of his brother Esau. May we be a people that see the face of God in our midst, in our families, in our church, and in our atrium. To God be the glory. Amen.